All right, so um, we're gonna try something a little different today. <laughs> Hey everybody. First off, excuse the mess. The Louis Vendra's cave isn't quite finished yet, but I need the desk at this point. So yeah, I wanted to uh, do a video here real quick. I did end up getting a new toy. It's here, it's a racing quad. Pretty cool, it's East Sheen Wizard X220. But uh, I tried to fly it. I had this whole intro plan and everything where I was gonna fly it like the old one and then dive it and it'd be really cool. And oh my gosh, what's happening? And um, yeah, it kind of, just a little bit is too much. So I need something to give me a little more practice. I've been working with simulators and everything and they're great, but it's just not the real thing. So the plan is to build a itty bitty little tiny one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here today. Should be interesting. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump down to the workstation. But anyway, so an initiation for those of you who don't know. So this is a racing quad. What you're looking at here is basically four motors. Uh, there's a flight controller in here, a couple other bibs and bobs. It's got a transmitter both for the video from the little camera and a transmitter for, or receiver, excuse me, for the transmitter, the controller. Basically, this flies differently than any other quad I've flown. You know, your DJI Mavics, your Parrots, things like that, they all run in <clears throat> stabilized mode, which is basically, you know, I want it to go forward, so I tell it to go forward, and then when I stop telling it to go forward, it stops. Quads like this run a little differently. They run in something called rate mode or angle mode. I give the stick an input, I tell it to turn, it turns at the rate that I select until the time where I release, at which point it stops in the air wherever you left it. Okay, so it's a bit different. It's very cool, but it's something that you gotta get used to. And getting used to something that flies this quick is a bit of an issue. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a tiny version of this. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, just for size comparison, I'm gonna leave that over here. So from Rack on Heli, we have the frame, tiny little aluminum frame. We have a flight controller from Banggood along with a camera. We have uh, some bits and bobs of propellers for the frame and O-rings for the frame. I did pick up some 1S batteries for it. I'm gonna be missing a piece, hang on. Okay. Uh, the motors are somewhere around here. Yeah. All right, so I've got motors from Lee Drone as well. So newbie drone, newbie drone. From Hobby King, I got myself a little FSA-8S controller. And from Tiny Whoop, I decided I needed a cute little thing, a cute little cover, because I'm gonna go ahead and do what they call the mullet mod, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, you can buy these things for about, you know, let's say $25 online, add a camera to them, or buy ones that already have a camera. They end up being about 40 bucks, but they do not work. <sighs> with your controller. They usually have their own controller or they work with, you know, like the Tyrannus or one of the other major brands. As you can see, I have Eternity Evolution, which, ah, which I dropped, which none of these tiny whoops can actually fly with it. So we're gonna go ahead and build one that can. So that was just a quick initiation here real quick. I wanted to let everybody know what all is going on because I do have some viewers who just have no idea what I'm talking about here. And you know, some other people who are just getting into the hobby. But I figured I'd just go whole hog while I was at it, as opposed to just adding a transmitter. So the first thing we're gonna do is build the frame.
we have our little frame together. It's so cute, it feels so breakable. I feel like I should totally not go eh, because I'll snap it. But yeah, here's our little frame. So, on to the next step. I believe that's going to be the flight controller and the motors and the battery plug. And I guess that would be in the camera. And receiver. Everything needs to be welded up. Welded. <laughs> Everything needs it to be soldered up. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get my MIG welder. We'll use it on this. Just turn it into a pile of slag. So I believe that's the next step. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, I completely thrashed the camera trying to solder it on. Apparently it's a little too small for me. And uh, I broke off couple of itty bitty little isolators I don't know if you can see that at all but I broke something off the camera and now it won't work so I'm just gonna give in and order myself a different camera but in the meantime let's at least get this thing flying so we'll continue with uh, putting on the motors and the flight con er, and the uh, receiver motors onto the little flight controller All right, now we're gonna get the receiver installed. This is actually the part that the controller talks to that tells this what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this here and we'll go ahead and set it up, I guess, for SBUS because it'll just be easier. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and strip off this outer casing because all it does is make a lot of extra space. Go, it's a really big antenna for this little tiny thing, but we can make it work. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug all this together. Alright, now let's go ahead and get the motor sucked up. Okay, again, excuse the mess, we're still moving in. But at this point, we're gonna go ahead and flash <clears throat> the little tiny board with the newest version of the SP Racing F3 Evo firmware. Okay, so after all of that work came the troubleshooting. I had put in all the motors backwards. Dang it, dang it, dang it, damn it, dang it, dang it, dang it. And I had used the wrong receiver style. I was using SBUS and I needed to use PPM protocols because apparently that's what the Turnigy needs for this particular board. I finally got it sorted. Well, sorta, hang on a sec. 
All right, little dab of crazy goo on the props to hold them all together, and... <clears throat> and ta-da! Yes, I know right now it's completely headless, but uh, we'll be fixing that as soon as the new camera comes in. So, that's pretty much it. That's what I've been up to recently. So as you can see, building these things isn't terribly difficult, it just takes some work. Yeah, I, I did stay up all night troubleshooting, but it's because uh, you're supposed to use PPM with the Turnigy Evolution, not SBUS. So as soon as I got that set up, it's flying fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. I just want you all to see this real quick. Hello. Hey you. Yep, every time I try and get any project done, any video editing, any anything, not only is my mic covered in cat hair, I'm covered in cat hair because this old guy loves to just get in the middle of everything. Isn't it right? Mm-hmm. I'm just nosy nosy and like to say hello. Yeah, we know you do. Say hi. Say hello to everybody. He wants to say hi. <laughs> hey, hop down. Let daddy get back to work. Hop down. Thank you.